How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. You guys talked me into it. So I'm buying a truck. But it's not just any old truck. It's a really cool truck. Come on, go with me. I'll show you all about it. I'll tell you about it. We'll go over it. It's a five-hour drive, 300 miles. So I'm assuming five, five and a half hours away, something like that. Hopefully it makes it back. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Let's get on the road. It's a 1995 OBS Ford F-350 7.3 liter power stroke diesel. Just look at this thing, holy cow, right? Uh, it's, it's got some work that needs to be done. It's, uh, it runs good, it's got a lot of work that has been done to the engine. It's got new injectors, new head gaskets, new all kinds. I've got a whole list and we're gonna actually make another video of all of it together, you know, and showing you exactly what, uh, what pieces have been replaced, what stuff has worked and what stuff has not worked. Let me show you the first thing that I noticed when I got into it, the windows don't roll down. So it's gonna be a long trip home <laughs> if the windows don't roll. Maybe it's just a fuse, it's power windows. Maybe it's a fuse, I can go in here with, I got a test light, I'll test some fuses around. Let me show you what the motor looks like. The inside, well, before we get to the motor, the inside, the front looks pretty rough. Uh, I've seen worse, I've seen better, I've seen worse. But the back actually, the back ain't bad at all. So the back seat looks really, really good. You just need some door panels that you need to shape it up. Headliner's in good shape. It's kind of sagging in the back here, but that's okay. I mean, the truck's a 1995, right? Um, three out of the five chicken lights work. So you got that going for us. All the lights work around it. We checked the lights already. They work. The alarm system works. Uh, <laughs> we found that out the hard way. Let's take a look at the, uh, the motor here. Let's see here. Oh, this thing's making oil. So it got plenty of oil. We got to drive this thing five and a half hours back. It's 300 miles. So five hours, maybe six if we take our time. But it's had a lot of work done to it. It's got two new Superstart batteries in it, or fairly new, I should say. Um, I gotta get some cap nuts for here, for the plastic cap here. But it looks, uh, it looks okay. One, oh, another thing I noticed, uh, the fan blows, but it only blows out the like where the defrost comes out and so we need to take a look at that i got a the body is a eight out of ten i guess i got a dent here but that's as far as dent i don't see any more dents didn't see any rust saw a couple of sp spotches where the paint is like the paint's coming off here but we're going to paint it we're going to actually i'm going to think about putting a wrap in it we'll put some new headlights in it I'm gonna try to keep it stock looking, but I'm gonna put some headlights in it. Adjust my power mirrors. <laughs> it's got a CM skirted flatbed on it. And evidently, I've got a 47 inch <laughs> exhaust tip on the back of my, it's probably a, a four inch or five inch down, down tube. I don't know, that's a little ridiculous. We'll probably do something about that. But uh, the CM truck bed looks good. All the lights work on it. So that's a good thing. I haven't tried this seven pin plug here. So maybe it works, maybe it don't. Got another plug there. The lights up top work. Man, we're gonna, we're gonna get a lot of work done with this thing. That's for sure. Let's, uh, let's turn it on, let's crank it up. It's a five speed. So that's the, this is a ZF5 tranny and uh, the 47 flavor, as they say. And uh, probably a Sterling, I don't know, 10 and a quarter in the rear. 
put my mercy brake on. Mercy brake don't work. Parking parking brake is not <laughs> the parking brake don't work. Alright, let's try this. Alright. So the parking brake is stuck to the ground. So let me see if I can pull that up. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go. So I was pulling the hood release, not the brake release. <laughs> so the brake pedal does come back, but the parking brake doesn't work. So we'll fix that. And then um, that's, that's just the cable, so I'll get underneath it on the next video. Well, maybe not the next video. In future videos, we're going to take care of all the little mechanical stuff. i got to figure out these windows, though. I'm going to have to use my wing windows or something until I can figure that out, which is a pretty awesome feature in the 95. Let's see. Fire this bad boy up for y'all. Let's fire this thing up. That sounds so good, don't it? Yeah, sounds great. I'm sure it leaks oil somewhere. It's a 7.3. The lights on the mirror, lights on the mirror work. Oh yeah, see how good looking I am when I do that. Let's take a look at some of the things that it had done to it. So he had, uh, they removed and replaced the fuel injectors. So they put eight fuel injectors in them, valve cover gaskets, changed the oil and oil filter. And that was done in December of 21. So uh, a year, it's got a year on the injectors. That At the time, it cost him 13, it cost him $2,200 to put new new fuel injectors in, all eight of them. He got a thermostat gasket, a camshaft position sensor, a thermostat, a diesel glow plug relay, a bunch of uh, gaskets and uh, like a gasket set, head bolt set, engine oil, windshield wiper mount front, <clears throat> put a new radiator in it. Put new heads in it, is that what that says for 1260 bucks? Heads, 1260, does that sound right? I've never priced these before. Uh, let's see. Cylinder head gasket, so it's been, I guess it's been bulletproofed as they say. It also has an electrical fuel pump in it. Replaced the inline fuel pump. They had it towed to the shop to do that. And a bunch of miscellaneous O'Reilly parts. So it's uh, it's got some fresh parts in it, you know. We're going to do a lot more to it. But that's some of the stuff that we had done to it. Or heat the previous owner. I don't know what this little toggle switch right here does. Maybe a power switch for a winch or something like that. It does need some diesel. I looked at the fuel gauge. I, if the fuel gauge works, I've got a quarter tank. But let me go get my test light and let me see if we can figure out these windows because I really do got to get the window down. There's actually no screws holding this in. So I think I can just put, pull it up here. Oh, look at there. It just might be some wiring issues. Where, where's those two go? All right, I'm gonna have to trace these. I'm gonna have to do some digging. But they, but they look like they're making good connections. That one don't look, look that one don't look good at all. But that's to the. I can replace this whole assembly here. You can buy this whole assembly. I've done that before in other vehicles. Yeah, look. You can see where the, the wires are grounded now. See these wires? They're probably grounded to each other. Looks like a rat or something has been in there. All right, so we're not gonna have windows on the way home. That's okay, I got a wing window and that's all that matters. Uh, let me see, show you the lights here. 
So these lights work. I'm replacing these lights. I'm actually we're going to replace them next week. I've already got them. They're sitting in my pole barn. Got uh, two chicken lights and the outside chicken light that works. The two, the center and the left doesn't work. Cent at left as you look at it. I didn't try the wipers. Let me try the wipers. Oh, uh, let, let me show you the. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm excited about my new truck. The lights work on the CM skirted flatbed here. The headache rack. All that stuff works good. That's a really nice bed. And you know, guys, to be honest with you, this bed, you buy the truck for the bed because this bed is brand new. It's probably nine grand, 10 grand. And that's about what we pay for the trucks, 10 grand. So, um, let's see if it's got two fuel tanks. I don't know if it's got two fuel tanks in it. We'll have to get up under it and look, probably does. But you got a fuel cap here and a fuel cap here. Let me turn these lights off in case I'm draining the battery. Fuel tank selector switch. Let me see if it's got two fuel tanks here. It appears that it does. Yeah. So it's got a, it's got two tanks, smaller tank. Well, I don't know what smaller tank is by looking at it, but because this one's kind of a square, this one's kind of oblong, this one's kind of a rectangle here. Okay. Well, what do you say we get the, well, you say we take this thing five hours, 300 miles down to Florida. Y'all wish us luck, all right? All right, all my gauges seem to be working. My battery, my temp, my oil pressure, all that seems to be working fine. No lights on the dash. Every now and again, the ABS light will come on. So running it and, you know, just fourth, fourth gear now, haven't even hit fifth gear yet. So we'll get on down the road. We'll just keep an eye on everything. I'm gonna top off on diesel, fill up both tanks, and then go from there. I gotta make sure I keep it in gear when I cut it off. So it don't roll, you know? Look at this, remember these things, fellas? This is so cool. The whole uh, pinch, pinch to take the key out type deal. I love it. Make sure I take the key with me. I don't think it, since it's a decent day today, I don't think it's, you know, it's overcast. So I don't think having a wing window open is gonna be much of a problem as far as keeping me cool on the way home. But if it was hot, you know, it would be horrible. I've gotta get this. I gotta get the duct work figure out as well. Because like I say, it's only coming through the defrost vents up here. So we'll figure that out. Now let's see how much it costs to fill up both tanks. Y'all y'all ready for this heart attack? Four fifty nine a gallon. Let's see what she does. Alright, it's gonna take forever obviously to this thing up. Wow, this is going to take a long time. Let me start with the rear. See how that looks. So we'll pull that up first. All flatbeds in this. Oh, oh. Hmm. Go back to this one. This one at least. Was that an angle? I'll get a rag and clean all that up. Something ain't right. Fuel gauge must not work. 
seven gallons is what I put in the front here and it's literally it's to the top and then I don't know about this one I can't that looks like it's to the top as well so let's turn on the truck and look at this fuel gauge I think the fuel gauge is broke <laughs> yeah which means I might have to do a hutch modification ain't that what they call it hutch modification see the brake light still on the dash there it went off so it went up to half a tank I flip down to the rear nothing happens I got to study up on this too brake light just come back on again <laughs> all right I got to learn all the quirks unless it's just finally making its way up there let me let me put my trip meter on and we'll go from there and then I'll check it I'll go seven gallons let's say at 10 miles a gallon 70 miles so I'll check it again at the 70 mile mark all right the brake light went back off have to take a gas all my lights are working um, the brakes are working fine clutch is working fine it actually it actually drives really really good so we got that going for us so we'll just get on the interstate and I got the chase vehicle he's gonna tell me how fast we're going and then we'll test the speedometer and see if it's a true true reading my gas gauge is going up a little more I'm showing about almost so a little over half a tank Eye on all my gauges till we get home. I love this thing already. I got a name for it. I'll tell you the name I got picked out for it here in just a little while. Alright, shows we're doing 60 miles an hour. 55, 55 miles an hour. So it's 55 miles an hour. It's gonna be a long way home. Right now I'm showing 60 miles an hour. What are you showing? Okay. So my. Okay. So I'm doing, I'm showing 60. So that's good. All right. All right. Bye. All right. So the chase vehicle is behind me. He says that he's showing 61 when I was showing 60. So we're good. Good on the speed on. Cruising along about 58, 60 miles an hour. And the truck's running fine for 4.6 miles since we got gas. So I'm just keeping an eye. Really, I'm looking at the temperature gauge, to be honest with you. But, it, you know, no vibrations. The crews don't work. So that stinks. But we'll just keep her about 60 and see if we can't get her home. take this exit it'll be 15 miles into our trip actually about 20 because we I didn't set my trip meter until we got to the gas station but twice now it's like it didn't respond to any throttle I had to take it out of fifth gear put it back into fifth gear then it picked back up again so I got to figure that out 
why it did that. Maybe a throttle positioning sensor or something. I don't know. But I'm going to pull out here on this uh, exit. Just kind of do a walk around and see how she looks after 15, 20 miles. Oil pressure looks good. Temp looks good. All the gauges look good. Let's get out and just take a, let's just walk around it. I don't see anything visibly leaking underneath. So that's good. That's promising. I got to figure out this uh, fuel fuel neck situation though. That ain't that ain't working for me. Let me open the hood. Just see if there's anything out here. No, no leaks that I can see. Might be a leak around that. There's an oil leaking around that crank down there somewhere. But that ain't because of this trip. It's been like that. You can tell it's dirty. Okay. Nothing overheating. No smoke. Belt tension looks good. Oh, I didn't check to see if... I need to put some windshield washer and fluid in there. The wipers work, but it was... Uh, no washer fluid in it all right let's get back on the interstate so far so good abs light just come on again y'all see that there's the corner in the corner there all right let's go so we went about 20 miles 15 on the trip meter so I'm gonna to try to do about 30 miles this leg and see, that'll put us 50 miles and then we'll go from there. But it's, I mean, she's, she's actually running pretty good. I mean, front end seems to be fine. My uh, chase car said there's nothing, no smoke or nothing coming out nowhere, nothing's flying off the truck. So we'll, uh, we'll just keep going. 30 50 mile legs until we get home shouldn't take us uh shouldn't take us all night if we you know stop look look at it check it out i want to check the odometer it's 24 9 when i passed that mile marker sign down there so let's see when i pass the next mile marker up here if it shows 25 9 if it does, I know my trip meter is working good. You get a little over 60, 62, it starts to shake a little bit, but not unbearable. Okay, here comes the next mile marker sign. And yeah, 25.8. So now 25.9 so it's pretty darn close follow us on our other platforms at hamiltonville farm i've got five more miles before my next planned stop so i'm thinking i'm gonna try to get through the south side of birmingham and then make my stop that'll be about the perfect time in there right, this is we've been 50 miles i have let me see if i can that's not that's not even warm to the touch so that's good that's not warm to the touch. I don't. I mean, I don't know if it would be hot, hot enough to feel from the outside those covers or not. But I wonder if I, I wonder what that is. But the gauges still look good. All my lug nuts look good. Got air in my tires. It's going fine. I meant to. I meant to look and see if I can do the other window. So I got that on there. Let me see if I can get the other window down. I didn't even think about that. No. They don't they don't work neither. Um but something is uh
See that sound? That looks like something in front of my truck. See those marks right there? I mean, not those marks, but that residue, or something. So somebody else must have thrown that on me, because that's coming not from my engine compartment. Does that make sense? I mean, we can always look again. Let's take a look. 50 miles down, 250 miles ago. I didn't even, you know what? I didn't even think, I don't even think I checked the coolant level, but my temperature gauge hasn't moved, but that's okay. Because I'm trusting my gauges because everything else is moving. I can see some fluid in there a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah, it seems to be okay. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing evident that something's leaking or anything, so that's good. So we're building our confidence. But we're doing about 60 miles an hour. Eventually we'll get home. I think I'm gonna try 50 more miles. That'll be 100 miles on seven gallons of fuel. And we're still showing a little less than half a tank. But my confidence in the fuel gauge is not, not high but my confidence on my other gauges are high. So, we'll see. Back on the highway, my ABS light came back on. But we've been running 60 miles an hour pretty pretty consistently now. So not, uh, I mean, my confidence that we're gonna get all the way to the house is pretty high. She's running pretty good. She's actually a comfortable truck to drive. Except when you're coming through Birmingham and they don't, evidently Birmingham doesn't use their tax dollars to pay for the interstate system. They need to, <laughs> they need to send a letter to the federal government saying fix our interstate here. And then it'd be another 20 year project to get the interstate fixed. But it's, uh, everything's, everything's hunky dory. Confidence level, the confidence meter is going up. I'll see y'all in 50 miles, 49 miles. Let's see if the windshield wipers work. Oh yeah, they smear the water pretty good. Getting a little, little dusk outside. So I turned on my headlights and the dash lights work. Got, got those green, you know, those green lights. So there's another positive. We're just trucking on to the house now. Odometer or the trip meter says that we've been 71.5. Uh, oh. Let me see where I'm going. That's not. I gotta get back out that way. Dang it. I turned the wrong way. Now we're back on track. So we've gone 71.7 miles since the last fill up. I don't know if that shows up or not. I can't see through the steering wheel. 71.7. So we'll go up here. That's on seven, a little over seven gallons. Wasn't it like 7.1 gallons, something like that? Anyway, so we'll fill it up and see how it works. And we're only doing the front tank because I can't figure out how to put gas in the rear tank. <laughs> here we go. Something else is I don't have a dinger for the uh, light. So I got to remember to cut the lights off. I gotta remember to put it in gear when I cut it off. All right, let's see. Let's see what she does here. I'm 
tell you what, I don't like this. this. I don't like this at all. Or, uh, if, if you guys got a CM skirted flatbed, do they all fill up like this? This is nuts. This is going to take 40 forever. I can't imagine if it was empty. So we ate 7.1 gallons, I think, is what we put in it 70 miles ago. So if you got 10 miles a gallon, I should put 7 more gallons in it. I'm at three and a half. Did I only use four gallons? Yeah. There she comes up the top. So four gallons for 70 miles. Let me see. I'm not a I'm not a uh, mathematician here. Let me see. That can't be 17 miles a gallon, can it? Is that right? Does that sound right? Maybe on the highway. 17 17 on the highway. Does that sound right to you guys? Huh? Interesting. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll probably go another probably go another 30 miles. Stop. Check it out. All right, let's get down the road. One minute, 37 seconds later. You know, I meant to mention something earlier. I was afraid, look at that, with the the key switch off, that temperature gauge is still in between the O and the R and normal. I should have thought about that because it ain't moved at all. So, let me turn the key and see if it even budges. Because ha see how everything else resets? The uh, oil pressure and the voltmeter. Oh, it drops down a little bit. So maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Maybe it is. Maybe. We'll see. All right. be a long ride home I'm already tired my muscles are stressed you know it's like okay what, what's going on here you're trying to listen for all the new noises and everything okay but she's she's um, she really shifts smooth brakes are good so I uh, you know I'm, I'm happy with the mechanical shape of it for sure We've been 100 miles. What I want to do is I want to Google how to fix this temperature gauge. Maybe it's just a loose connection uh, or there's a fuse, but let me get some Googling done because I want to try to, I want to, try to fix that um, temperature gauge. You got the, the sensors are down here. I'm pretty sure these are the, the sensors. Um, right behind this pulley, is the engine coolant temperature sensor. I believe that's it right there. And those wires look fine. So, and I don't have the tools to pull them out with. They say you can pull it out and then like ground the, maybe ground the wire to a hot part of the engine with the, with the key on. Uh, but I'm not sure about that. So this wire comes up into this harness. So all the wires look connected. And look, there's no... Uh-oh, there's a... Aha! Look at that. What is that? See that? Let's see if that is indeed the coolant temperature wire. It goes in this loom. Could it... Could it possibly go back down in there? It is a... Maybe. All right, let me get, let me get my tools and let me crimp that back together. I took the, I took the coolant out. It's got green coolant in it. 
And I don't know if you can see if the camera, if it shows up on camera or not, but I mean, right there is the green coolant. I mean, it's like right here. So my assumption is they might have done that at the dealership, uh, like before I got there or something, but it ain't used it. And that's that. Okay, let me ask you guys this. This wasn't hot when I pulled out. It was warm to the touch, but it wasn't hot to like it didn't wasn't going to scold my hand. But it's got a new thermostat in it, according to the. Didn't we just look at the records a while ago and it had a new thermostat? Let me put these two pieces of wires together. some electrical tape so we were a third of the way home I, I don't have an issue I don't think I don't think it's not going to make it to home it's going to run fine it's running 55 miles an hour 60 miles an hour down the road just perfect all right here we go Just gonna redneck this together here because I don't have uh, any connectors but then I'll fix it when I get home I should probably look at a diagram and see exactly what that is it's been running smooth the whole way I add this wire and put this wire back together it might not work smooth no more that's hot don't don't do it like this at y'all's house y'all seriously this is just literally to try to get me home all right Let me see. Let me see if I can Google what that what that is. Some type of solenoid. It's got four lugs. Uh, ninety-eight to 03. Let's try. A plug relay switch maybe seven three diesel oh it might be a glow plug relay switch yeah it might be a diesel diesel glow plug relay does that got anything to do with your temperature and en engine temperature diesel uh, 7.3 liter diesel Globe plug relay diagram. All right, let's see what this says. Okay, that might be number five. Key control supplies battery to GPR winding. Maybe that's what that is. It looks like it to me. So what is a supplies battery to GPR winding what is that I'll have to google all that but it's probably not my engine control I mean it's probably not my engine temperature sensor so we'll just have to figure that out but it's not not overheating so that's good I think we can get it to the house for sure let me uh we'll put this back on here man these wires are all chewed up Yeah, I need I need uh 
I need Wes from Watch West Work to come up here and do all my wiring for me. All right, let's go. Uh, let's try that. And see what happens. So it's still in between the O and the R. Oh, it moved. It moved back down to the N. Now it's... Maybe it did work. It's at the... It's, def, it's definitely in a different location. Because it was in between the O and the R. Now it's below the N. I don't know. I don't think... Maybe I just... I'm trying to help myself out here. think the temperature gauge works because now it's in the O and normal but I was cruising about I'm doing 55 miles an hour now I was doing about 65 67 and uh, it it jumped up to the R I say jump it moved up to the R in the word normal on the gauge so I actually think it works it just runs cool maybe I don't know but we was running there about 65 through a little bit, and then uh, it's got a slight a slight vibration that comes and goes at these speeds. So maybe it's a tire issue. But uh, I hear a squeaking, but I don't think it's a bell. I think it's something in the in the cab of the truck. Well, we uh, we've been 180 miles, so we're getting closer, over halfway and showing a quarter of a tank of gas. I'll get gas here soon. I say gas, you know what I mean, diesel, fuel. Anyway, all right, I'll check in with y'all in just a sec. We just pulled up to a firehouse subs. We're gonna grab us a bite to eat. Let's cut this baby off. Leave it in gear so we don't roll down the hill here. Turn my, park, or turn my headlights off because I don't have the dummy light. All right, so. Yeah, it's uh, doing good. Very happy with it. I'll get some fuel here in a minute. So there's a couple things that I've observed. First of all, there's three things I gotta fix right off the bat. I gotta fix the parking brake. I've gotta fix the fuel gauge. And I gotta fix my windows. So those are my top three priorities. Not necessarily in that order, but those are the three things I've gotta fix first. Um, I was running that 5860 thinking, oh man, cause I got a slight vibration sometimes so maybe it's a wheel issue or, i mean a tire issue uh so i don't think it's like mechanical i think maybe it's a tire issue maybe a balance issue uh but then we ran 65 for a while the temperature gauge did move golly eighth of an inch 16th of an inch something like that but it did move went back down to 55 miles an hour and uh it um it, it cooled off a little bit so before we or after we get done eating I'll check the oil before we go, and then we'll fill up with fuel. I mean, I've got—I think I got enough to get home. We've got about a hundred miles left, something like that. Maybe a, I don't know, somewhere around in there, plus or minus twenty miles. But uh, so I think that uh, once we get the fuel in it, I'll check the oil in it, check the coolant again, and all that good stuff. I think I think she's going to be a good running truck. She's—I'm telling you, she's a lot of fun to drive. You guys with these power strokes, man, you guys know how it is, but. We'll, uh, we'll get to the fuel station here in just a minute. Let's check the oil before we go finish up the uh, fuel. I think it's got ton. I think it's got tons of fuel in it. Uh, I think the gas gauge doesn't work from uh, the front or the rear tank because if you toggle the switch, the gauge doesn't move. The needle doesn't move at all. So something's wrong with the gauge, I think. Oh yeah, she's still good. Man, I'm so happy. I'm so I'm so excited that this truck runs good. It's in mechanically good shape. All 
right, this should be our last fill up of the night. Golly. I got I gotta figure this out. I got I'm doing something wrong here. Is it cool and fun? I mean, I know these truck. This is a truck stop island, truck island. So the fuel dispenses faster and all that. I understand that, but I'm not doing something right there. Hey, real quick, too. Let me know in the comments if you know a good place to get keys made for a CM skirted flatbed. Can I just email CM and say, hey, I need new new keys for my bed? I can Google it, I guess. seven more gallons in it so we put seven 14 uh, 18 gallons we spent 18 gallons we've gone a hundred and well almost 200 miles so let me see what that math is that should be easy right so about 12 miles a gallon 11.11 11 11 11 11 11 200 divided by 18 but I, we haven't gone quite 200 so it's probably getting I'm going to say we're getting 13 and a half miles a gallon somewhere around in there because I haven't done quite 200 miles yet, and it, and it might be more than 18 gallons, it might be less than 18 gallons. Not exact science, right? But in the ballpark. So that's that sounds like a diesel getting 13 miles a gallon, right? So, all right, we uh, we're almost at the house. So I forgot to tell y'all during this whole process what we named it. We named it Old Black Betty. So we'll be calling her Betty, and you'll be able to. Uh, Follow along as we clean. Oh, Black Betty, bam, blam. <laughs> oh, Betty. That's a long trip, holy cow. Couple things I'm pleased about. I'm pleased that the motor made it 300 miles. Uh, sight unseen, you know, we bought this on the Facebook Marketplace. I don't, did I mention that at the beginning of the video? I don't think I did. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. Sight unseen, went up there, paid for it, and, uh, and got back to the house. Uh, Motor runs good, brakes run good, steering's tight. It's a comfortable truck with this, with, as far as suspension goes. It's very uncomfortable as far as the seat goes. Uh, the seat, uh, <laughs> there's no padding left in it or whatever. I gotta fix the gauges. Five out of the six gauges work, so that's okay. Uh, we'll fix the fuel gauge. But from what I understand, fuel, Fords are notorious for having fuel gauge problems. So uh, it may or may not ever work. But uh, there is a, a, a modification you could do in the fuel tank to, to kind of help that, I guess. The Hudson, the Hutch, I don't remember. I, I had to kind of Google it to figure it out. But we'll trace down the wiring. We'll figure it out. Um, get the windows working. Get the locks working. Maybe work on cruise control. Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, and fix the... There's probably a flapper door. Uh, maybe a motor in there for the flapper door for the... It's stuck on defrost, so to get it out at the dash, there's some type of arm that moves a, a baffle or a door. We'll get that fixed. Uh, I got, I, I'm telling you, man, I'm excited. I'm excited about the, that 7.3 sounds good. You know, the five-speed five transmission just 
it shifts flawless so there's nothing wrong with it there had a hiccup once three times in the trip it acted like it didn't want to get fuel but then half a second later it, it picked up again so not sure about that that's the only kind of mechanical issue that was in that was uh that happened during the trip but other than that you know everything else is just maybe some creature comfort type stuff so but anyway we're home we took it uh it is it is 9 42 my time i left the house at 7 30 so uh 8 30 9 30 so that's 14 hours and 10 minutes that it took me to go up to coleman alabama pick this thing up and drive it all the way back but uh <laughs> what a trip it was so we got a lot of work to do on it i can't wait to show you guys first of all i've already bought the headlights for it i've got to get new headlights put in it and so we'll do that and then probably pick out some of that wiring while we've got uh, maybe the front grill out and stuff and, and go from there. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Hey, Jesus loves you. appreciate you guys watching the video. Remember, there's discount codes in the description box below. We'll see you in the next video. God bless you guys.